You guys, it's almost like I really like baking or something. <laughs> Hi, I'm Erin G. McDowell, and welcome to this episode of Bake It Up a Notch Bite Size. These are short form episodes where we take a deeper dive into subjects that you want to know about. And this particular one is one that I love to talk about. We are going to talk about royal icing. I think royal icing is a little bit misunderstood and sometimes people might think it's actually more complicated than it really is, but it's actually so easy and can produce so many wonderful effects. So today we're going to show you how to make royal icing, desired consistencies, and of course, we're also going to show you some fun ways to use it. If this sounds like something you're interested in, or if you've loved past episodes of Bake It Up, a notch, do me a favor and click like and subscribe so you can be made aware as new episodes become available each month. All right, let's get baking. Royal icing is actually incredibly simple and easy to make, and it has just a couple of ingredients confectioner's sugar and egg whites, and then often a little bit of water. I also have some vanilla extract here I'm gonna be using for flavoring. You can use flavoring, you can use other extracts. Sometimes people just leave it perfectly plain depending on how they're using it. Royal icing is usually used for a few different techniques. It's um, sort of like sugary cement. If you make it really, really thick, it can really be kind of lacquered on, piped on, spread on in lots of different ways. It's what I use to hold my gingerbread houses together. But if you have a thinner consistency, you can use it for dipping pastries or cookies, and of course for using lovely techniques like flooding, which is what we're gonna show in this episode today. But before we can do that, we need to make our royal icing. And it's going to start with some egg whites. Now, if you don't want to use egg whites, um, these are pasteurized egg whites and they don't necessarily get cooked in this process. And I know that that can actually really bother a lot of folks. So there is a way to do this without egg whites. It's with meringue powder. Meringue powder is dehydrated egg whites. We talk about it in our meringue episode of Bake It Up a Notch. So if you're somebody who's a little bit squeamish about the idea of using raw eggs, that's the way to go. You can get meringue powder, of course, online or in the baking supply section of most craft stores. What we're gonna do is we're gonna start by whipping the egg whites. If you were using meringue powder, you would add a little bit of water and whip those two together. What we wanna do is get them a little bit frothy before we start adding our powdered sugar. I'm gonna add my vanilla extract in while it's whipping too. If you're not using any flavoring, you can just skip that and whip with the egg whites alone. Once our egg whites are nice and frothy and they've got a little bit of aeration, we can start adding our powdered sugar gradually. The only reason we're adding it gradually is because there's a lot of it. It's really the base of this icing. So it's really important that we don't add too much at a time or we're gonna get a sugar shower. Another way you can reduce the sugar shower is by kind of starting it like in a pulse when you first start mixing. That way there isn't like one quick move of your attachment that's gonna run in and, and jump it all up. Once we start adding our powdered sugar, really what we're doing is we're just trying to mix it to combine. Depending on what you're using the royal icing for, you're gonna want either a really thick consistency, almost thick and fluffy. That would be if you were making a gingerbread house and assembling it in that way. Or if you're using it for something like flooding, you're gonna want a little bit of a thinner consistency. This is the messiest way I could have done this. When a professional like can't add sugar to a bowl. This time on Food 52. <laughs> the consistency of your royal icing is gonna depend on what you're using it for. So this is at the thicker stage right now, really nice and thick and fluffy. That is what I would use if I was going to assemble a gingerbread house. It's gonna be thick enough to easily pipe and put onto our houses, but a thicker icing is going to set up firmer faster. But I'm gonna use a uh, flooding consistency today. So I'm gonna go ahead and put it back on. You can continue to thin your royal icing with either a more egg whites or I just usually use water. We've got enough egg white in there to kind of do the job that the egg white does, which is gonna make this icing really beautiful and shiny and it's gonna help it set nice and firm. So we can use water for the remainder of thinning it out and getting it to that right consistency. 
Remember, if you're going to add food coloring to your icing, that's also going to add more liquid to it. So if you want to add food coloring, just make sure to maybe add a little less water than you think you need. You can always add a little bit more once you've incorporated your food coloring. If it ever does get too thin, you can adjust the consistency thicker using more confectioner's sugar. So when you get it to the consistency that you want, in this case, we're flooding. So what we're looking for is a consistency where as it falls onto itself, that it sort of is reabsorbed without any kind of line. It should be very fluid, very soft, um, but still thick enough to pipe. That's exactly what we're looking for. And when we get to the desired consistency, whether it's that or whether it's the fluffier stuff that you're gonna use more for icing, it's ready to be stored in an airtight container. But the most important thing to remember is that it needs to be covered directly. This means taking plastic wrap and covering directly against the surface. The way royal icing works is that it sets up due to a combination of the starch that's in the confectioner's sugar and also the proteins that we've got in these egg whites. It creates this beautiful shiny icing that sets very firm. Unfortunately, it can also set firm in your bowl if it's exposed to enough air. So we wanna make sure that we cover it directly with plastic wrap, making sure that it's not getting any major exposure to air so that it'll stay exactly the texture that we want it until we're ready to use it. I'm gonna go ahead and transfer this to some piping bags and we're gonna start doing some flooding decoration on cookies. If you wanna dye your royal icing, it's ready to dye as soon as it's at the proper consistency, but remember, hold off a little bit of extra moisture if you need to, if you're trying to get a really saturated, bold color. There are lots of different ways to use royal icing, but one of the most common is to decorate cookies. The technique specifically that I think a lot of people wanna know about is called flooding. Flooding is a really lovely technique that produces a fairly flat, even surface on the cookie, and then you can use more royal icing on top to decorate it and create lots of different effects. If you flood with multiple colors, you can actually make a single cookie look like smooth and pretty, but in different colors to kind of show what the shape is. Now, there's a few different ways to flood. So let's start with the easiest one first. Actually, that's one other thing I wanna talk about before I get started. Some of my pastry bags have small round piping tips on them and others have no tip at all. When I first started playing around with flooding, it was something I would do whenever I had a little extra royal icing. So I never even messed with tips. It's definitely possible to do it, but if you want that super pristine, wonderful look, you're gonna wanna use a tip. I'm gonna show you some with both ways just to prove that you know there's not just one right way to do it. So I'm gonna cut a small opening from the end of my pastry bag. And the first thing that you want to do is pipe an outer line on the cookie. Now, this is important because for this first technique, I have two different consistencies of icing. I have a thicker icing to make the line around the outside and a thinner icing to do the flooding on the inside. I think this is a little bit easier because it enables you to have a line that really holds firm. But there is kind of a downside to this, which is that the line is often visible on the cookie. And so if you want that really pristine look, we're gonna show you the slightly more difficult way to do it next. So the first thing we're gonna do is just pipe a line of icing around the cookie. I talk more about this style of piping also in our Piping 101 episode of Bake It Up A Notch. But one of the things that's cool about royal icing is it really can kind of you can kind of guide it. So you can be kind of piping a little farther than where you need. Just lay it down when you're done. And if there's any kind of visible seam, like you can see here, you can just use a skewer, a toothpick, or the tip of a knife to kind of drag the icing where you want it and smooth out any lines like that. Now, we would have a thinner consistency of the icing to put on the inside of the cookie. And you, you can let this set a little bit, but one of the things I usually advise is by the time you've done a whole tray of cookies, the ones where you piped the line first are going to be set enough and ready to go. Also, if you don't wait as much time in between them setting, they're going to have a smoother overall look and line. So we're just gonna apply our thinner consistency of frosting all over the cookie. and you can apply a little less than you need and then use your skewer or toothpick to drag it to your outside line. 
You don't want to use too much. Um, it is called the flooding technique because ideally you would kind of flood the inner line with the icing. But if you use too much, it can even break this line and we don't want to do that. So we don't want it, then it will literally flood over. <laughs> we don't want that. We want all the flooding to happen within the plane that we are creating. Oh my gosh, this is so cute already. So there you go. That's our kind of easiest way to flood a cookie. Now we're gonna let this cookie set over here. And you can see because I used the toothpick and I didn't wait too long in between, these are some cookies that Katie, my wonderful helper, made upstairs before. And there's this bit of a line in them. But again, once we start decorating and putting other things over it, you're not gonna notice that line. But if you want that really smooth look, that's one way to achieve it. The other way to achieve it is actually by just using one consistency of icing to flood, the thinner consistency from the get-go. I mentioned that this is a little bit trickier because it can be harder to maintain that line around the outside edge with this, but with enough practice, it really is a lovely and easy technique. So we'll start by piping the line around the outside edge. Ooh, I might have gotten a little bit close to the edge and that's good to show. Can you come here really quick? <laughs> so see, I piped too close to the edge and now it's dipping to the outside edge. That's not ideal um, because we're not gonna be able to get any icing to stay. There's, we didn't really create a wall there. So because it's still wet, I can touch it with my fingers and kind of move it where I want, but I'm actually gonna let this one set and take another cookie. So, cause you know, mistakes happen, guys. Mistakes happen sometimes. So what we wanna do is we wanna pipe but not too close to the edge because we want to avoid that happening again. And then as soon as we complete the outside line, we can just immediately start flooding the interior of the cookie. And because we're using the same consistency of frosting, it should kind of create a really seamless, lovely look, kind of all on its own without our help, but you can also help it with the skewer if you need to. So cute. Now what we want to do is we want to let these cookies set and we want to let them set until we are ready for any kind of finishing or topping that we're going to put on. And I have some that are ready, so let me grab them. Here I have some really sweet little strawberry cookies that I made. Um, and this is a good example of using the multiple different colors. Um, to achieve certain effects. So now that my red icing has set, I can pipe my green leaves on the surface of this. And that way we kind of have this smooth, cool effect, but in two different colors, which creates dimension and makes it look more like a real strawberry. Oh my God, look how cute that strawberry looks from the overhead cam. It's so adorable. <laughs> So in addition to adding these little, this little greenery on the top, I can also add some little strawberry seeds. And because the icing beneath it has set, we can just pipe right on top of it and it creates this sort of 3D, super cool effect. <gasps> it's adorable. It's the cutest little strawberry cookie you ever did see. Josh, get out the heart again. I love everything. Let's do some more. <laughs> Here's another example of a cookie that was flooded with different colors. And in this case, we kind of left the lines more intentionally because we were trying to show three different flavors to make this look kind of like a Neapolitan ice cream pop. So there are so many opportunities. And the main thing you wanna remember is that you do need to give this royal icing a chance to dry. The more royal icing there is, meaning the larger the cookie, the larger kind of the overall flood space, the longer it's going to take for it to dry. But typically royal icing sets up very quickly. The one thing to be careful of is it is going to kind of set up on the surface first. If you touch it while it's still not fully set, it could actually break through kind of revealing looser icing on the bottom and you could kind of end up ruining your beautiful glossy effect. So just allow them plenty of time to dry and then just get ready to have a lot of fun flooding. Thank you so much for joining me for this episode of Bake It Up A Notch Bite Size, where we talked all things royal icing. Remember, when it comes to royal icing, it's really about consistency, but the icing itself couldn't be easier to make. 
Look for the ideal consistency for the technique you're trying to do and then just have a ton of fun. I had so much fun decorating my cookies. I've got my pineapple. I've got my little ice cream pops. I've got my lemons, turned out so cute. And I think my favorite are these sweet little strawberries. That's really what's so cool about royal icing. It's really like edible paint. You can have so much fun and there are so many possibilities with it. Thank you so much for joining me for this episode. And as always, happy baking. Mm -hmm.